So following on from the previous video, find that rattle. We're going to use a similar technique, but um, try and look for wind noises and water ingress as well. So how will we do that? Well, we're going to connect the laptop, first of all, to the in-car audio system via Bluetooth. So it's no other connection than Bluetooth, whereas before we'd use the AUX cable. A lot of new vehicles don't have that feature. So rather than running AUX cable from the laptop into the car, and having a lead coming away from the car, especially when you're trying to find a wind noise, we'll use Bluetooth instead. So we'll look at NVH, we'll go through the setup, um, configure the hardware, and then try a few tweaks in the software that will help us find this noise. So let's go over to NVH. Um, I've just clicked on the audio button here, bottom right hand corner. You can see there that uh, we are connected to this vehicle, which is a VW, and I've got the audio set to about 75. Inside the car, I'm connected to Bluetooth audio and I've got the volume set to around about 50%. So that will give us a kind of a, a decent audio sound from within the vehicle that we can sniff for using a microphone outside. So first of all, when you open MVH, you must have your MVH registered or unlocked Picoscope connected to the laptop. Click on options here, um, advanced options and features and make sure enable advanced features is active and click on OK. Um, we now want to go to, uh, well sorry, go back to options again and I want to look at maximum frequency of interest. I'm actually on 20 kilohertz so this is the full audio spectrum 0 to 20 kilohertz. Next then, we want to go to the setup and we are using the single channel because what we have is a single microphone connected to Pico. Um, be careful here because whenever you're using just a single channel, a single microphone, it will ask you to connect to channel B, not to channel A. So we have a TA259 interface, which is the three output NVH interface a TA144 microphone, and I've opted for engine compartments purely because we'll be measuring audio outside the vehicle. Think of engine compartment as outside, passenger compartment as inside. There's no notes to include here because we are going to be moving the, the microphone around like a stethoscope looking for uh, leakage of a, an audio frequency. And I've got my signal history here set to um, 100 seconds. Uh, okay, so Next up, we'll go to Options and Function Generator. So again, remember this from Find That Rattle. We're going to dial in a frequency. Now, we could dial in something like 1,000 Hz. Click OK. And we'll have 1,000 Hz audio played through the audio system inside the car. Just check the volume settings. And if I open the car... Well, there we are. You can hear it. Now then... <laughs> Rather than having that 1000 hertz played continually um, in a workshop with your colleagues, it will drive them all crazy. So let's go for a frequency that is um, possibly outside the typical audio range of most people. It's a high frequency. For me, it's around about 15 kilohertz. Um, we'll try that one. So we'll type in 1500 hertz and then we'll... There we are. So there is a high frequency 15 kilohertz uh, signal play through the audio system. Um, some of you, if I open the door, may be able to hear that, may not. Right, with that playing and with the audio settings as they are, we'll go to record and analyze and we'll start the recording. And you'll notice here, I've got some markers set up already, you can just see this 15 kilohertz peak here. Let's prove that that's 15 kilohertz by placing that ruler there. And I've left those rulers in position so we can actually see. Make life a little bit easier, I will zoom in on this area here. So click the zoom icon, and there it is. There's that peak that's been picked up by the microphone. So we do have leakage already from outside the vehicle. So let's find out what our baseline is, our absolute, sorry, not our baseline, our absolute maximum. Open the door and we are pointing the microphone inside the cabin. Right click, auto scale. And let's zoom in again on this area here. And we'll take away some of these rulers because we've got a lot of confusion there. So I'll take off the zoom so we can use the ruler handles. 
drag this away, same again here. And with our microphone just placed inside the cabin, there we have our peak of around about 83 decibel. So if we close the door, obviously that is going to drop. Now you may have heard a popping there from the speaker. That is the audio system, um, unfortunately struggling with that frequency, that permanent 15 kilohertz. That may happen again. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my microphone around the trim and we're looking for an excessive leakage. So there are some hot spots on cars, generally top of the drop glass here, where the glass butts into the seal. In this corner here, where the window frame meets the aperture. Occasionally at the waste mouldings here, and we see there that we do have some leakage. Uh, round door handles, but be very careful. Remember how we're generating this 15 kilohertz. So it is from the speakers within the car. So we could actually have leakage through door handle apertures and what have you. And then of course, at the bottom of the door, drain holes as well. There could well be leakage of the uh, 15 kilohertz. So where this really comes into its own, um, certainly seals. So hold your microphone in position. Let me just pull a ruler down on that so we can actually have a guide. Bear in mind this vehicle does not have a wind noise, so it doesn't have um, any customer complaints. So from our peak when we open the door to where we are now, a difference of let's say 40 decibel. Let's just qualify that again, open the door. There we are with that absolute peak. In fact, we're higher there. Come back to closing the door, microphone in position. And what we're looking for is something that simulates the absolute maximum we had when the door was open. And you can, of course, just ease the seals a little bit to see if you can force a leak within reason, of course. This works really well with frameless windows where the rake of the glass has been rubbing against the seal over time. And then you get a little bit of a space in this corner just holding your microphone here and pressing against the glass, we'll see, the glass will see a reduction in amplitude and then release, you'll see an increase in amplitude. Now bonded windscreens, this is where this really does come into its own. So I'm just gonna move this along here and just to see if we do get a change. And we are pretty much just below the average there, aren't we? Yeah. So on this car, I think we can safely say nothing of any concern and we don't have any symptoms. Um, door mirrors is often a hot spot. Yeah, now look at that, that's interesting, isn't it? So by comparison to the top corner here, let me just place that ruler at that point. So 51.4 decibel against the top of the glass here. Pull that ruler down, 39, okay, give or take. So yeah, door mirrors do tend to be hotspots for wind noise and I think that is quite interesting what we've detected there by comparison. Okay, another way to view this would be to use the bar graph view. So we click on bar graph and we'll add vibration. So um, first of all, we don't need all these, sorry, add vibration. We're not looking for a vibration, but we'll add an order. Okay, we know that we have a fixed uh, frequency of interest at 15 kilohertz. So I'll just um, delete all of these. And we'll add something called a uh, custom vibration. So we click on add, and we'll type in here a fixed, well, it's fixed frequency, it's 1500 is our offender because we know we are playing that 1500 uh, hertz, 15 kilohertz signal through the audio system. And we'll give it a WN uh, for wind noise. In fact, let's put that in capitals just so it stands out a little bit better. Click OK. And I may as well delete all of the orders because we don't need them. And there is our wind noise. So now we're looking at uh, 1500 
hertz, kilohertz, sorry. And same again, rather than looking in the frequency domain, we've got uh, about 41 decibel in this top corner. It's coming down. Obviously, microphone position is absolutely critical. But had we got a clear leak, we would see that immediately. Same again here. This was a bit of a hot spot, wasn't it? There we are at 51. So another way to view the same offending frequency. All right, I hope that helps and uh, takes away some of the pain of chasing these notorious faults, wind noise, uh, water ingress, etc. All right, thanks for watching.